Hello, this is Scott. Today in this video, I'm once again playing the role of a fourth year medical student who's demonstrating the power and importance of machine learning in healthcare. So my plan is I'm gonna make some introductory comments and then show a demonstration of machine learning in action. Um, and note the focus here is model deployment and scoring of models. Um, last time we actually built uh, three, I think it was three models, and we evaluated those models, and we determined that the boosted tree was the best model, and that's the one I'm going to deploy today. So this is really the execution phase of machine learning. Also, I'm going to attempt to make these videos short, less than 10 minutes, so it's going to be at a very high level of detail. So if you'll remember, last time I referenced this book, and um, this is an excellent example of a bunch of uh, tutorials in healthcare. And I'm using, again, the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Dr. Cromwell's um, uh, guest uh, author chapter on reducing surgical site infections and readmissions and um, for real-time or right-time scoring of, of models. So with that, let's begin. So I'm going to go into um, actually a platform. Um, TIPCO Statistica is the platform that I'm using for this particular uh, example. And I actually have this, this uh, workspace deployed to, to enterprise, but you don't necessarily have to, to use enterprise to do what I'm going to show you today. So if you'll remember from last time, this was our workflow, right? We were sourcing readmission data that's coming in, and this is the, the architecture um, given. We're, we're bringing in Microsoft SQL Server data. We're training up. We're, we're doing some exploratory analysis. We're checking the validity and veracity of the data with this data health check node. Then we're doing uh, really building three different models. And if you'll remember last time, what we determined was, if I look at the different, the lift chart, I'm doing my model evaluation, and I'm comparing this boosted tree um, with an AUC of 82% versus this um, uh, Chade uh, tree model versus this neural net model. And actually, I like the performance of this boosted tree. So now let me show you how I can deploy um, those models. So to give you a high level overview, um, what, and this is not every way, but this is the, what we're gonna kind of cover in this brief demonstration. One way to deploy is actually in database, right? So I can take the code directly off and I can generate that code within this workflow. I'll show you that in, in, in the workspace. And then I can, save that code off and store it as a uh, Microsoft or a stored per SQL stored procedure in C, C Sharp. I can stick it in the database and I can run that through SSIS or, you know, as an ad hoc um, method or even on a, on a stored procedure basis or, or an event trigger. Another way to do it is, is a, uh, a one click, I can just deploy the entire uh, workspace itself, not just the model, but the entire workspace. I can deploy the PMML, um, or I could even save the PMML to, to file. So we'll look at those methods, and then we'll look at the, um, the scoring or execution as, as an example, uh, once I have that model deployed. And then just to let you know what's coming up next time is going to be weight of evidence. And this is basically uh, preventing black, black box modeling, one way to prevent that. So with that, let me show you in this boosted trees node, the code generator. So I can generate all of these different types of code within uh, Statistica. So what I'm going to do, I have here the this, this SQL stored procedure. Um, in, in C sharp. And if I look at the actual uh, output here, since I had, this is my, um, my uh, boosted tree 
um, summary right here. And these are my deployment codes. So you can see here, I'm generating PMML. I, I'm generating C++. Um, the SQL deployment is the, is the one that I'm interested in. So essentially, I can take this, this, this code off. I can extract this as a copy. Um, and then I can save this off. I can, I, I can actually deploy this to enterprise with a single click or I can just simply, you know, copy it and stick it in, you know, uh, uh, a text editor here. This is Notepad++, but um, any, any sort of text editor. So I can deploy that directly off to Microsoft SQL Server or I can manually um, do that as well. I'm not going to save that here, but um, just to let you know how, how that is done. And it's and it is, and just to to make one point. So once I have this as a stored procedure, um, just note that you know it runs in database. You don't have to have Statistica or anything else. Once this model is built, it, it's it can be used um, as a standalone model. And again, uh, this one is is a stored procedure. You can see create procedure right here. Um, uh, for transact SQL. Okay, looking at our agenda, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a one click deployment of uh, the workflow as well as the PMML to enterprise server. So, one of the things that you can do here is if I have this PMML or this workspace, I was going to show you the workspace, I can deploy this entire workspace from end to end as an object within SQL Server. So in one click, the deployment, um, I already have it configured, but let's suppose I didn't, then I would just say up, update, I'm sorry, deploy a new object. I would specify where, what data configuration I wanted this, I would name it, and then it would be deployed. And we would see that object here. You can see I had several workspaces here. You can denote by the Hopefully you can see this by the icon. These are all workspaces. This is going to be a um, a model. So how do you do a, an individual model? Let's. So if I go into um, this this node, right? So this is coming off. This is the way Statistica uh, actually compares models. It generates PMML, and then we use the the holdout set against that that PMML. So in this node right here, I can see that this is my PMML code. And if I was wanting to deploy this to enterprise, again, I would just click a one, um, one button, and then I would just specify where I wanted it, and then that would um, create the PMML model as an object that I could do what, whatever I wanted to with it later. Um, another thing that I could do, I mean, I can just simply uh, copy this off um, and stick it into an editor like Notepad++, which I've done here. And then the only thing I need to do is when I save this, I save this as an XML document, and then I can use that XML code uh, later um, into model, model deployment. Okay, and um, let's see if we're on task. So the, really the, the, the next thing that I wanted to show is the actual scoring or execution of, of a workspace. So let me. So what I'm going to do is um, I actually have some patients to score out here. Um, this could be a here, it's just a spreadsheet in enterprise, but it, this could be actual actually a uh, again, a, a database connection. It could be a, um, you know, a static worksheet off of my desktop, whatever. But once I have the data here, then I'm just going to create a new workspace to to score out these patients, right? So I'm going to say File, um, New Workspace, and I'm going to go with a blank workspace, and then I'm going to select this data to to put in into this workspace. 
Now, once I have that, those patients right in this workspace, and I, again, I just have these uh, 12, 12 patients, then the only thing I need is I need a rapid deployment node and um, a PMML node, right? And so I've, I've already saved my PMML off and um, I can load PMML and I can load it from either my local drive or since I deployed it to enterprise, it's easier to just open it from enterprise. I'm gonna select the, the model that I deployed and click okay. And then I'm gonna hook this up to rapid deployment. So rapid deployment now has a data set, it has a model. I execute the uh, rapid deployment node and I score out my patients, and there's my my patient scores. Um, I can do all sorts of data manipulation, cat, uh, you know, concatenate these with uh, the the raw data, et cetera. But I think you get the idea. Hopefully, you do. Um, that it's that easy to actually actually score off particular. So I think that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, hopefully. Um, you found this meaningful um, and again next time I, I plan on going over wave of, weight of evidence um, which is really a very powerful way for data scientists or analysts to um, interact with the data so you can discretize continuous data you can control breakpoints for either research or regulatory reasons um, you can control the interactions um, so in a way, it's a way of preventing black box models, right? Because sometimes in machine learning, if you have methods that are um, essentially using continuous data any way that it wants to, you can't control or understand um, exactly how it's using those, those relationships. So with weight of evidence, it's a way for a researcher um, to, to understand and go with, um, you know, what's, what's acceptable um, in the literature or for regulatory reasons. Um, and this applies to medical as well as financial as well as to other types of data. But I appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you next.